Oh, okay. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Um, welcome back to Jeremy's Make. Jeremy Makes. Um, got a, another live stream of uh, the Prusa build. Um, the MK3 build is complete, and the printer's been running for about a week now, I think, right? Um, since the last stream that we had all of those problems with the stream dropping, it seemed like every 10 minutes. Uh, so let's uh, knock on wood that that does not happen tonight. Uh, the Prusa i3 is set up back there behind me, right there, there it is. Um, printing, um, it's printing some of the um, spare parts. Uh, for this build, I do have most of the parts as I teased in my Facebook post um, advertising this video is being live tonight and I did say somewhere between 10 30 and 11 I thought about when I said that I should just said 11 uh, and yep sure enough it was uh, almost exactly 11 o'clock when I got this stream started actually a couple minutes after uh, so I was pretty spot on I should have just said 11 but I got most of the parts I think no actually I've got all of the parts printed out there 99.9% .9 sure I got all the parts printed out right there that I'm gonna need for this upgrade uh, so we're gonna get this thing started tonight doubt that I get it done tonight obviously because um, it can Pretty much entails uh, completely disassembling the MK2S machine uh, that you can see sitting behind my left shoulder here, on your right side of the screen, um, and reassembling it ground up. I mean, the box that the upgrade kit came in is the same size. I actually didn't compare, but I'm pretty sure it's the same size as the uh, as the full kits for the full printers. I mean, almost every part's getting upgraded anyway. So, anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing started. I left the box sealed and everything. So let's get things rolling and I've got the uh, the instructions here as well uh, so let's get things unwrapped here sorry again about uh, anybody listening with headphones the mics right above where I'm unwrapping this so I'm sure this plastics pretty loud for them Times that they go around. There it is. All right, there it is. Now the original Prusa i3 MK3 kit got the little sticker there that says upgrade. So they actually use the same exact box. Uh, but son, it's funny. My other box said uh, MK3 with a sticker over it, uh, where it said MK2. I'm sure. But again, that kit that I built on the previous streams was over a year old. Um, so this one is the actual M uh, i3 MK3 kit upgrade. Uh, so I'm sure it's just missing the printed parts and the um, the superstructure steel frame. Uh, and I can't think of anything else that would be missing. I don't know. There's, it's going to walk us through. So um, first, let me go through um, the instructions here. So this is the stuff I've already pretty much done already. Uh, so we've got the introduction. Um, so we're repairing the M3 kit. Uh, welcome to the tutorial, how to upgrade your um, uh, Prusa i3 MK2S, the original i3 MK3. Please prepare and kit upgrade received. The upgrade kit does not include all of the parts needed to build an MK3. Therefore, we must disassemble following, uh, uh, following the MK2S. Uh, all motors uh, and shop zonal nuts will be reused. The motor pulleys will be reused. Uh, the 623 bearing housing times 2 will be reused. I'll see screen, the front bezel. The knob um, will be different. I'll see screen, but the front cover, cover and knob will be different. Um, and then the extruder springs. Now I didn't have any instructions to print the LCD screen. So, oh yeah, it does need, uh, well, we'll see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll just leave it loose for now. Um, or if I don't finish this stream today, I'll print it tonight or tomorrow. Uh, the extruder springs times two are gonna be reused and the U-bolts times three are gonna be reused. Uh, use the labels for reference. This is kind of the, how all the rest of the instructions start. Uh, most labels are scared one to one and can be used to identify the parts. Uh, labels on pictures use an example. Um, during the pictures, we're going to make sure we go through all the pictures. That's often where, if you've watched my previous streams where I've messed up, I will uh, 
forget there's multiple pictures uh, on the instructions and forget to click through them all to hit all those steps. Uh, not realize it until a few steps later or maybe even the next chapter. Uh, but hey, we're human, right? Uh, so uh, when you browse on the guide on the on this website, you know, just hover your cursor over the image and click the the uh, view original, uh, copy of the media manager, so on and so forth. Printed parts uh, have the part uh, version numbers printed in on them, which um, you know we've upgraded a couple of parts. We even have one part I'm going to use the um, the heat bed uh, cable cover for the back of the heat bed. I'm going to use the same one that I printed for the MK3 kit um, that uh, gives you, um, I can't remember the degrees, I think it's like 65 or 70 degrees. Uh, and then of course, attention, before printing the parts, check the versions of the heat bed. Uh, I'm 99.9% 99 .9 sure I'm going to have these. If you look here, this is a cool little graphic of uh, what the Pusher, um, um, the Slicer PE edition, Pusher edition looks like. Uh, fit a lot of prints on the bed. Uh, I still haven't done that many prints on one bed yet. Uh, and then wants us to check the bed version to make sure it's either soldered or bolt or, um, or screw on terminals. I'm pretty sure all the new ones are, are soldered. Uh, this being a newer kit, um, I would assume it's soldered as well. Um, uh, but I think that the part, the custom part that I printed from Thingiverse uh, fits either one of them. Uh, but we'll find out, won't we? Uh, before we start disassembly, you need to print all your parts for the MK3. Uh, the two bundles, the orange bundle. Uh, the G-code covers all of the orange parts, Y-axis, X-axis, Z-axis. You can also print them in black if you desire a completely dark printer. Black parts bundle, the G-code includes all the parts that are supposed to be black, like the entire extruder and Rambo cover. Make sure you print the lightest R3 design. That's everything behind me again here. Extruder parts must be printed in black, otherwise you'll have issues with the filament sensor. All parts must be printed in PETG or similar material ABS. G-codes are available on your website. Um, and then for printing individual parts, it's recommended to use a slicer PE or slice 3R, slick 3R or Prusa control with 2.2 uh, millimeter layer height, grid infill at 20%, no supports. Fan nozzle must be printed from ABS only, which I did do. I printed because um, I knew I was gonna um, Need two of the fan nozzles whenever I printed the upgraded R3 parts for the uh, R th uh, for the M3 kit. Uh, all these acronyms and short shortenings. Um, it's uh, I printed out two of them anyway while I had the ABS out. I don't like to print ABS a whole lot. Uh, it does uh, smell pretty bad. So uh, we are here for you. Uh, lost the instructions, missing a screw, cracked printed part. Let us know. You can contact us at the following channels: using the comments, using twenty four seven live chat, writing an email. And then let's start the assembly. So uh, start the, the, well, disassembly. So let's move on to the disassembly. So this is where we're gonna do the disassembly. So I um, guess I'm not gonna open up this yet. You know what, I am gonna open it up. I wanna see what's inside. So let's go ahead and open her up uh, and see what's inside. I did have to um, order the uh, smooth PEI sheet. I think it says it right there, yeah. Um, because they still don't have the um, the coated sheets in stock. I'm still waiting for my upgrade for the uh, Mark uh, the MK3, the Mark III kit back there uh, to get my feet, uh, my um, coated sheet for that one. So, uh, congratulations uh, on getting your original Prusa i3 MK2S to MK3 upgrade. We'd like to take this moment to thank you for uh, again for buying your Prusa. Directly from Prusa, you support it for the development. And we do our best to help starting printing ASP. Uh, upgrade kit packing list. Okay, so it does have uh, everything. In. What's a jelly delight? Frame uh, plus printer QR code label. Uh, heat bed MK52 plus spring steel sheet. Hard and smooth rods. Filament to print new parts. Electronics box plus SUP box. Fasteners, nylon filament. Tools plus zip ties. Via, uh, a power supply unit with power panic. Parts for the Y axis, including plates. And Jelly Delight, did they do away with the Ambrose? Uh, I hope not. Well, it doesn't matter. We'll see. If it's something new, we'll experiment. Uh, final package weight, 7.8 kilograms. And then uh, this was put together on January 31st, 2019. So not a very old kit. And then that's the checklist of all of the, uh, the fun um, nuts and bolts and hardware that come with it. So... That's fantastic. That's actually new. That wasn't in my other kit, so I wonder if they're doing that on all the kits. So let me just kind of put this off to the side over here in case it's useful in the future. Packing material. Packing material. Packing material. So 
this is one of the reasons why you would want to open it first. Now, I already had some um, orange PETG prusament. Um, so I'm guessing this is also, um, it may not be prusament. This actually doesn't look like, uh, maybe it is, I can't tell. Uh, I could scan the QR card and find out. It kind of looks like it'd be prusament. It's not the same type, style of uh, spool holder, but this is also mini spool too. This is not a full spool. Uh, this is 300 grams. So nice that they provide the, uh, the the filament to print all the parts. Makes it uh, a little bit simpler on um, you know not having to order a whole separate roll or anything. So that's nice. So save this for some future prints. So uh, let me put this with the rest of my filament back here. There you go. And then we've got the hot end heating measurement graph and the heat bed heating measurement graph. They of course test all the electronics. Firmware flash, XYZ movement, so they they test everything uh, to make sure it all works. Although I thought we were reusing the motor, so how could they check the movement? Maybe just have a test um, motor push up to it. Anyway, so just a little test piece there. So I'll put that back in the box once it's done. So this is our new. Uh, this is the you know one of the biggest upgrades here. Let me flip to the overhead. It's small. There we go. So uh, this is the. Um, Aluminum extruded um, T square or T slot uh, extrusions, plus the new front and rear plates, which they of course didn't have plates on the MK2 S. Packing material. We've got the upgraded power supply unit. I'm wondering if this is printed like it was on my MK3 kit. Yep, sure is. It's printed. That's funny. Ah, yay. Hey. Do you have the Amber Recovery Bears? Just said Jelly Delight on the checklist, so this is gonna stay near me for when I complete stuff. All right, another box of fun stuff here. Uh, so this is gonna be most of our hardware. So they have it labeled pretty much like the regular kit, obviously. You've got all of the parts, uh, bags numbered with what parts are supposed to be in there and what uh, chapter it goes to. All of the nice, um, oh, maybe it is uh, the. So I'm finding on here now the heat bed is screwed on. So maybe uh, the new ones are all screwed on. So I'm hoping that the. Uh, oh, there's my uh, tools. So I'm going to leave this out real quick. Don't think I'm going to need them because I have them from the last one. But there anything else in this box I might need sooner rather than later? I don't think so. Nope. It doesn't look like it. Here's a uh, roll of uh, PETG uh, black. I'm gonna guess about 200, mil, uh, 200, 200 grams as well. Is that what the other one? Uh, 300 grams. So yeah, it feels like about 300. Yeah, so 300 grams. So that's nice. Uh, and then again, I had uh, already got about a roll of uh, PETG prusament. Another 3D printing handbook. And then we've got our smooth rods in here, along with the textile sleeves, which their textile sleeves are a little bit nicer than the ones I found. That's nice. So that, and then of course, our new heat bed. So I'm going to kind of uh, get some, uh, Organization where these all go. So heat bag down here. Go ahead and put this down here. Not gonna need the 3D printer. Heat bag down So, all right. So that's uh, that's checking everything in there. Um. So. Absolutely fantastic. So now we're going to get into the actual disassembly. This is step uh, chapter two. So the actual disassembly of the MK2S printer. So this manual is describing uh, upgrade from the original Prusa i3 MK2S MK3. In case you have an older version, I strongly recommend getting the U bolts for the heat bed first. You must 
be uh, logged on our eShop to see this spare part. Make sure the filament is unloaded from the hot end and the printer is unplugged. Prepare tools including the MK2S kit to get similar from the nearest hardware shop. We strongly recommend getting a box for the parts, which I did. I have a little box sitting over here. There it is. A uh, box sitting over here for the parts that we're going to be instructed to keep to reuse. Don't have any filament loaded. And then we're going to need uh, some of these tools, which um, if you saw from the overhead camera, um, I did get a um, fun little um, hex head, and it's actually got more than that. It's got a bunch of security bits and everything like that. I did get this to uh, help out with the assembly this time around. So it's this fun little kit here. So um, I think uh, the 2.5 is the one we're going to need the most, but you know I'll, I'll wait until it tells me what size we're going to need. So this is going to be uh, good to have. Uh, makes it a little bit easier, but again, um, if you've never watched any of my other streams, I also caution whenever you use one of these tools instead of the, uh, you know, the Allen wrenches that come with the kit. It's a lot easier to over torque some of those bolts uh, or screws into um, into their home and possibly break something. Either strip strip the threads, uh, or a lot of times you're screwing into the plastic part. Um, you may have a nut on the other side, but you're screwing metal to metal with plastic in between and you can over torque that and break the plastic part. So you got to be very careful. Uh, and I do speak from that from experience if you've seen in my other live streams. Um, so uh, it gets us straight into it. So sure the printer is not connected to the power outlet. So let's go ahead and pull the printer up. So I can pretty much guarantee it is not <laughs> connected to a power outlet um, because I can do this. Uh, so. Here's my MK2S, and yes, you'll see there's a scar, a battle scar here. Uh, this came on early, early, early on. I think I think I ended up talking about it in one of my uh, live streams from, what, a year and a half, two years ago almost now. Uh, it was doing the um, the standard calibration, and the hot, the hot end ran, ran straight into it, and I wasn't paying close enough attention, and it damaged the PEI sheet. I did get another PEI sheet from Prusa, um, but I've just never had a print that covered this much of the bed. Uh, I did get the Lamisol to take all this off um, in case I ever did, but I've never done a print big enough to cover the whole bed. I've just, you know, luckily used, you know, Slick 3R Prusa Edition shows this grid and I just avoid this square. Uh, I've actually did have a print that I forgot about it and it actually did go over this and it actually didn't ruin the print. So, um, you know, never really affected my use of the printer at all. Um, not any more than, you know, saying the bed being warped or anything like that, which I did have some problems, but I think this bed is warped. It's one of the main reasons why I want to upgrade to the MK3. Um, I use Octoprint um, hooked up to this, and it has a cool little plug-in uh, that measures all the nine points on here. Uh, and then it gives you this fun little, you know, graph of how much difference each portion of the bed is on the nine points and, you know, connects all the dots, of course. Uh, and uh, there is one edge. I couldn't figure out which orientation is. I think this edge is higher and this edge is lower or it's the inverse. But basically one of these two front, either the front left or the back right edge is either higher or lower by a 0 0.05 millimeters, which in 3D printing is a ton. Um, but um, also we're upgrading to 12 volts. So it's fantastic upgrading to the full bond tech extruder. Uh, upgrading to the Rambo Incy with the Trimatic drivers, upgrading to a 24 volt um, with uh, panic um, shutdown on the power supply. I did do some other little things to this, little tweaks here and there to this uh, machine. Uh, if you look up here, you'll see the gray printed parts. Um, I never liked how the MK2S had the uh, threaded rod just loose and, uh, and not captive up here. I noticed that it was just like moving around a lot and it wasn't parallel going all the way up and down. So this was a piece that someone designed on Thingiverse again. Thingiverse is a, you know, a really good, um, um, not the only, not the best, but really good uh, resource. A lot of people design things, put things up there for free. Uh, but this one added in you know, the skate bearings so that the threaded rod was captive the entire time. Uh, these things are printed out of um, out of um, PLA and have survived for you know I think I did this probably within the first two months of having the printer. Uh, they're not even printed all that great. Uh, so I still have a lot of problem with bandings and the uh, x-axis giving me lots of problems. So, uh, but overall, you know, the part has done its job man magnificently. Uh, again, more problems with the the print bed than anything else. So other than that, I've printed a ton of stuff on this printer. And uh, it's been great. Um, you know, I've heard there's, uh, and according to the website, there's been lots of upgrades to the MK2S kit because I know they still sell it. 
and I think it's still a great printer. Um, you know, just uh, wanted to upgrade to the MK3 and wanted to share with you guys about the process of upgrading it. So uh, let's go ahead and get into uh, starting this off. So first thing it wants us to do is to make sure the printer is not connected to power. Here you go. You can see not connected to power. No power plug coming out on that side whatsoever. And then uh, turn uh, left uh, turn left part of the printer with the Rambo cover towards you. So this is the Rambo board here. Uh, and then I want to take my 2.5 millimeter Allen key. So I'm going to start with my fun new tool here. Uh, and uh, we're going to open the Rambo color and unplug all of the uh, cables. So this part here, and I guess I should have gotten a bag or something to get all these. You know what? I think I have something. Hold on. Let me find something real quick to put all these uh, nuts and bolts and screws in. Pretty sure they gave us all the nuts and bolts and screws, but I like having extra parts. Why am I not finding anything? You know what? Here we go. I had a bunch of random wood screws in this thing, so I'm just going to use this. Um, just dumped them out back there if you didn't see. Uh, you know, I'll clean that up later. Not a big deal. Uh, hello there. How you doing, flavors? Welcome back. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our board here. And we're just gonna unplug stuff willy-nilly. So I'm not even gonna describe what I'm unplugging here. I'm just gonna start from the top and work my way down. In case of any zip ties inside the rainbow cover, I can't manage to cut and remove them. Yeah, I didn't do any wire management in here. The inside of this box just had the cable stuffed straight in. Do you want to be careful? Obviously, you don't want to just be throwing cables everywhere because we are going to be reusing some of these cables. So, obviously, obvious, obviously. Oh, the prints are looking great. So, uh, flavor. So, um, here. Let's see if I can get this. So, this is um, I, I do have it um, on my channel, so it's it's there for you to see if you want to go back and look. And I know it's a lot more fun to watch them live. So, I printed this uh, last week after the stream ended on the MK. Uh, MK3 and uh, that looks pretty fantastic. Uh, let's see if I can get the focus on it here. Let me go to the zoom camera. There we go. There we go. Get the focus down closer there. So you can see. Uh, no layer shifting whatsoever no under or over extrusion first layer is absolutely beautiful so this is the bottom of it so first layer there um, this is PETG so I did have some stringing so I did take a file to some of the pieces also some of the parts I remembered from the kit that I you know the MK3 kit uh, that I had problems with the bolts I took a file of some of those places I uh, got a um, um, heat gun and uh, just uh, burned off some of the, uh, the, the the wispy stuff. There's still some left because I don't like to leave it on there too too long. Uh, but overall, uh, I am extremely happy, and it's actually printing right now. Um, so it's absolutely amazing, comparably to the MK2S and the MK3. I flavors. I know. I think you were on that stream where you asked me about if what what I was printing back there because I'm sure you could hear it on the stream. I hear every once in a while when it does a quick movement and it's just the belts moving. It's not even the motors. It's the belts just going. Um, so you might hear it every once in a while. Uh, but uh, to take a little bit of oil, uh, if you don't uh, already have a bottle, this stuff right here uh, is three in one oil. Just a, a dab of this uh, on, the, uh, on the bearings, a uh, dab of this, uh, oh, excuse me, on the uh, idler. Uh, for the Y and the X, dab of this on the um, fairings for the X axis and for the Y axis, uh, for the Z axis. Uh, and man, because uh, I was having a little bit of problems on the MK3, the, that the uh, Y axis, or excuse me, the Z axis idler here uh, was, you know, making some high pitched squeals. It was the only thing making any noise on the entire machine. A uh, couple little drops on this, moved the extruder head back and forth, and that noise has since long been gone. 
Uh, just don't get any of them in your heat bag. Um, if you do, clean it off immediately. Don't let it eat away at the PEI sheet or, you know, make sure you, make sure you clean it off so it doesn't, your prints stick correctly. So, anyways, let me continue with disassembling this. So, uh, overall, been impressed with the machine. It's, it's mostly been printing stuff for this upgrade since then. So... Yeah, if you, I mean, if, you, if you're thinking about buying another one, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you you should or shouldn't. Uh, but if the only reason why you got your Rittier MK2 um, S was because of the, the noise, uh, the Trimatic drivers uh, have made it so much quieter. Uh, so it's absolutely fantastic. All right, come on. Can't get that one out. Plug these motor cables. Let me get some more cables out of here. There's a, one cable I can't get out. Yeah, I have been fortunate and have had uh, a separate room, or in this case, a basement that my printers go into, or printer until recently went into. So even if they made noise, it wasn't a big deal. Although my wife did say when I showed her the new MK3, um, she's like, Oh, yeah, I could always hear whenever you were printing with the other one. Uh, it was never annoying or anything, so I never said anything, but you could always just kind of hear something when there wasn't, TV wasn't on or something, you just hear something was happening in the basement. So, and of course the cats would, uh, you know, be a little crazy sometimes hearing something going on down here. Um, but then the other night I wasn't printing anything and the cats were going crazy and she's like, you're printing something? What are you printing? And I'm like, I'm not printing anything. She's like, oh, the cats are meowing at the door like you're printing something. So I had to come down here and check out what was going on. I'm like, what is going on down here? It was nothing. I think they um, they got down here the other night. I don't we don't let them down here, and they got down here the other night. So I think they just wanted to get back down here, get away from the kids. So, come on. I don't think I've opened this uh, door and gone inside here for a very long time. No need to, right? The only thing I've been doing is. Unplugging and plugging my Raspberry Pi from the uh, USB port up there. All right, come on. There it is. And I'll just pull that out of the way. Almost got everything unplugged. I do have to get down there with a screwdriver to unscrew the uh, heat bed and the heater block for the extruder. There's that one that was giving me problems. There's that one. Oh, and flavors, you're probably, uh, now that I think about it, um, should be happy that you uh, really weren't on uh, that last, last stream, the last one I did, um, buttoning it up and getting everything done and printing because it, it kept dropping. It seemed like every 10 minutes the stream kept dropping for some reason. Um, and it just got really annoying. I was getting really frustrated with it. I kept streaming. It kept logging back in automatically. And I just kept continuing on because I was paying more attention to trying to get the stream back working again. Well, that's right, you don't have to screw these in. These are actually just plugged in. Forgot about that. Well, that's a little convenient, a little bit more convenient than those screws on the uh, NC board, but hey, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, so is that all of the cables unplugged? I think so. Let's see, I should be able to pull heat bed. Cabling loose, yep, got it. Should be able to pull all the extruder cables out. So I think, uh, let me go ahead and push on to the next picture. Open around to pull all the cables in case of any zip ties. 
then run cable management cut and move them. Yeah, some safety pins. Okay, so it's not saying to pull any of those out yet, so I'm not gonna pull any of the wires out. It just says to disconnect them. Do not pull the cable. It says do not pull the cable. I already pulled one of them. Anyway, so uh, so now we want to uh, y-axis motor and heat bed disassembly. Uh, so we're gonna to lay the printer on the power supply unit side and move the heat bed almost all the way to the back. I never stream video, so I have no clue why it stops every time. It might some sort of say. No, so um, a couple of times it was my internet connection. Like I don't know if it was just um, my internet was. Uh, you know, obviously I've got cable, which is you know a, a, a wide area network WAN. Um, so the more people online in the neighborhood, the slower the internet connection gets. So I don't know if it was just you know there's a lot of people online that night, um, or if it was um, you know OBS, or if it was YouTube, but it was actually, or if it was Restream, because um, I use Restream to uh, live stream from you to YouTube and Twitch, um, just to you know reach more people and um, you know get more people interested in doing stuff like this. Um, I know Twitch is mainly a video game platform, but there's a lot of good creative content on there too. So, uh, why it was doing every 10 minutes. I know, I think it's, you know, it went for like a half hour, 45 minutes before it started and it just kept doing it. So I'm assuming it was a network on my end thing, not on any of the other services I just mentioned. Um, but why the night before that I could stream for four hours straight and not a single drop. That's what confuses me. I mean, what's the difference between Monday and Tuesday night? I would think Monday night would be busier, but that's just me. All right, so uh, lay the printer on the place uh, power supply unit side. Uh, move the heat bed almost all the way back, which it is. Yeah, so that uh, for better stability, uh, press the belt down. So let's do, let's go and switch the next picture. I uh, press the belt down and out from the Y belt holder to release the tension in the belt so you can remove the Y axis motor. So. Oh yeah, so we got to undo this portion here. So uh, let me switch to the zoom cam and see if I can get, so here's uh, the underside. And what it's asking me to do is that the, um, the old way of uh, Prusa doing their belts was they would have you loop it around a, uh, a pull up, uh, a stem or something and then back on itself so that the teeth of the t of the um, of the cable of the cable of the belt went together um, I'm sure you remember flavorous uh, which is a great method uh, that's nothing wrong with it um, you know it worked for a while for a long time I never had a problem with it on this printer at all uh, you know getting it tensioned was a little on the difficult side but it wasn't too bad and then pulling that out was pretty darn simple Go ahead and undo that. So now it wants us to uh, take the motor off. So uh, we, we need to um, press the belt down from the Y belt, release tension so you can remove the Y motor, cut the zip ties holding the Y access motor cable. So I did get my side cutters here. It's, um, it wants you to use the, um, the included uh, needle nose pliers, but um, the cutters way down here. Uh, oh, sorry. I want you to use the included needle as pliers and put the cutters way down here. Is that how you're supposed to get the stuff? I have no idea. So I'm going to use my side cutters here. Again, these are indispensable tubes for th tools for 3D printing. So let's go ahead and cut, carefully cut, get away from the motor wires. All of these zip ties. Let's see. That was one, two, and then there's another one right there. Three. Perfect. One last one, there's one up here as well. There we go. All right, so the Y axis motor should be wire, Y axis motor wire should be clear now, along with the end stop. And now, um, Using a two millimeter anode to release all four screws. Full, uh, no, so we want to we want to take the motor off right now. It's not saying to take the motor off right now because the motor's still on it in this picture here. So use a two millimeter anode key to release all four screws 
So flavors will be proud of me. I got a uh, proper hex head screwdriver with a full kit of bits, hex security, all kinds of other things. Yeah. I knew you'd be proud of me. So it wants us to remove all four screws um, that are holding the heat bed into place. So uh, it wants us to start with the pink ones, the outer ones there. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice one. Um, got all kinds of cool bits and uh, it's magnetic too. So that's even pretty fantastic as well. And I gotta tell you, having that little that little end that uh, rotates against the palm while you're spinning it makes things way easier. That's right. I already took that one out. The um, I took the um, the screw out of that one because that's where I had a um, camera for my for my Raspberry Pi mounted. I had a uh, longer bolt in there, and I wanted to take the camera off because it's actually set up on the MK3 back there now. Uh, it's not actually on the MK3, it's actually on a Gorilla Pod tripod thing that is attached to another piece around it, but it's not, uh, I didn't want it on this printer. I figure why I put the bolt back in if I'm just gonna take it out for this anyway, right? There we go. And then last one, make sure to hold the pr print bed so it doesn't come flying off. Should still have the two in the middle there using a two millimeter key. So we're using a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. Release both M3 screws. So let's get my 2.5 back. And we're going to release these two screws here. I can actually cut this bell rest the way off. I remember how much of a pain it was to get all this installed and make sure to not tighten it down too much and it was just kind of a pain in the butt. So it doesn't want to come off because the Brambo door is in the way. There we go. So I'm glad I pulled that one out because now I've got the heat bed out. So there's the old heat bed. You can see that scar. You can see doom 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 doo 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 doo. Yeah, that was uh not fun and just wasn't paying enough attention. I wonder if I can see, go back to the front cam here. This thing just wasn't, I think I could see a little bit of a warp. And I think it's definitely the back right. Well, I gotta, gotta check this out because that's constantly been a little bit of a problem for me, how warped this bed was. Definitely not reusing that piece. I'm not saying my desk is completely flush, but definitely big difference. Let me go to the uh, zoom cam and get down to the bed here so I can kind of rock it back and forth there. Doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really, hold on, let's see if it, see, it doesn't really rock back and forth that way. And I've got the um, printed part and the soldered stuff all hanging off the end of the, the desk here so that that's not going to hurt or it's not going to affect it. I mean, it does a little bit, but this is, you can see it in the camera there. Anyway, so this is going bye bye anyway. Might keep it. Um, frame it on the wall or something like that. I don't know. Let's see. Um, so now that we have that off, uh, cut the zip ties on the spiral wrap near the Rambo case and remove the heat bed completely. I already did that. Uh, use the two for there. Okay. Um, now, it doesn't have us removing the uh, 
Y axis motor. There we go. Y axis motor. So turn the printer back on. Uh, turn the printer back up. There we go. So turn it back up. Make sure all these cables stay out of the way there. So we go to the overhead again. There we go. Uh, turn the printer back up. Move the heat bed back uh, to the front and release the screws holding the end stop and move it away. So uh, this is going to be a two millimeter, I believe. No, it's even smaller than that. It's the and this thing's got all kinds of sizes here. The one point five. It is the one point five. All right, and this end stop out. Out of the way. Cable, cable, cable. And the end stops aren't needed for the upgrade. Yeah, Flavors, I don't know if um, you were on the stream. I think it might have been the last stream, or maybe you were on it. I don't remember now. Um, where I actually can't get that cable off there until I release the motor. Um, where I talked about that the Prusa, the, M, the MK3 doesn't have um, end stops. And that's because the trimatic drivers on the ENC board are able to sense the resistance and the drop in the voltage when the motor can't move and it knows that that means that it's reached its limits uh, in theory, obviously. I did have a little bit of problems with that. Watch that video for the explanation on how to fix that. Uh, but um, it's really interesting because it's one last thing to go wrong, one last thing to install. Uh, and it, if it works, it works, right? All right, so we've done that. So the motor, oh, no, no, that's the same the motor now. So we are 2.5 again. We need to undo these screws. trying to find one of these screwdriver kits with ball end bits and I might buy a set of ball end bits eventually to fit this I couldn't find a, a kit like this that also had ball end bits so ball end hex bits by the way all right so there's the lighter. that part just finished back there so there's our end stop not reusing that but we are reusing this so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the uh, the gear on there. I do want these screws out of here though. Uh, where's my pliers? There they are. Get that thing is finished. You like end stop flavors? I mean, I get it. Yeah, because it's a, it's actually a physical button, you know, in this case. Um, But, you know, the traumatic drivers seem like they're working kind of like a closed loop system. I'm going to get some of these parts off of here real quick. I just want to see what they look like. There we go. So, here they are. This is uh, some of the extra spare parts I printed. Uh, just today, uh, I printed another one of these because I broke the one from the last one. Gotta say, I do like this uh, flexible bed. It makes parts way easier to take off. 
Still not the easiest, but especially smaller parts. That's what stuff like this is for. I got these, uh, I got these little painter palette uh, stainless steel tools. And uh, these things have uh, been great for removing parts off the MK2S and we'll continue to use it for the MK3 when uh, parts don't want to come off. But this flexible steel sheet really helps get things started with it because now I can just get the part right underneath, the pallet right underneath, the pallet knife right underneath. And here we go. Beautiful. Just gonna put these with the other parts. And uh, here's that same part I was showing off earlier. Flavorous. No, this is not PLA, this is PETG. Uh, you don't want to print any of these parts, according to Prusa, in PLA. You do want to do all of it in PETG. Let me see if the front camera will get a better shot. Oh, yeah, let me do the full screen. Yeah, lighting's bad there. A little bit of banding there at the bottom, or at the top. But not, not too shabby. Oh, uh, well, I'm sifting, sifting through all of the cameras. Through all of the cameras. So, some of that looks like it's designed in there. So, like, right here, I thought this was banding, but I think that's designed in there. And then on the back, back here, a little bit of banding right there. And everything else is just wicked smooth. Yeah, same thing on the other part, too. So, it actually might be designed in there. A little fuzzy, not too bad. This looks actually, I mean, looking at this brown part here, this is, there's no banding on this on the, on the rounded edge here, none at all. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, being able to clean it without having to have it on the machine is nice. I actually usually set um, in the G code uh, for it to raise the hot end up a little bit higher uh, than it's defaulted to. Um, usually, of, depending on the size of the print, another you know 30 to 40 millimeters higher than um, what the default stock Prusa profile says. I think it says 30 millimeters. I usually put it up 60 or 70, depending on how big the part is, or you know whatever it is, get it up and out of the way, so I don't have to worry about it. So let's get back to a normal camera here. Oh, let's do this. All right. So now we've got that all installed. It's telling us to take off the heat bed. So let's turn this back around this way. And let's go ahead. Get all of our U bolts installed, which actually I don't even really need to do that because I don't have U bolts on here. This is another upgrade that I did. Never liked the U bolts. Um, I did install the MK3 with U bolts, but I um, one of the things I did on this machine very early on was uh, printed and used these. Uh, can't get them off right now until I'll show them to you when I get it when I get the entire thing off. These little printed uh, parts to replace the U-bolts and hold the uh, the bearings into place um, always worked out well. Again, the the bed was warped. I don't think these ever had anything to do with that. Um, I probably have the U-bolts somewhere. I know I have the U-bolts somewhere, and actually I'm going to have to find them now. Uh, or maybe I'll just use these again. Uh, these are printed in PLA, so I was a little worried that it being underneath the heat bed it might be a little uh, precarious, but uh, I checked them on all the time and, you know, never had a problem with them and then, you know, stopped checking on them and 
and ever. We'll see how they fared now. So uh, we are going to be re uh, reusing this part. So I'm going to put this back into its home there. So uh, you can kind of see them in the overhead camera there. Let's proceed down here. Uh, just these little uh, printed pieces. One of them uh, is cut out so that it, you know, doesn't stop any of the wide movement. Did get a little bit of uh, stress on the uh, threaded end there because it it never threaded into a bolt. It just threads straight into the plastic. So I should be able to just pop these off now. There we go. Or sorry, two of these are there. So you can see it's got that little notch cut out. And you can see uh, a little bit of warping. See a little bit of the uh, warping from where the, th the threads were pulling up on the plastic as I tightened it down. But uh, yeah, overall the part survived really, really, really well after a year and a half, almost two years worth of printing. So that's fantastic. I'm going to have to find those U-bolts. I don't think I want to reuse these on the MK3. Go. Or maybe I will. I might change my mind. Uh, they come with um, uh, the kit comes with new bearings. That's why I never liked the uh, U bolts flavors, was because of the pressure that you could accidentally. That's the wrong camera. There. Uh, you could accidentally put onto the bearings. I'm not really putting uh, pressure on the bearings. I'm putting pressure on this um, on the smooth rod, and I'm pushing down on the side of the bearings because uh, these things are on there pretty damn tight. Yeah. Well, I want to take this piece off the bearing first. But again, it comes with new bearings, and even if it doesn't come with new bearings, I have new bearings. So, with my custom little 3D printed aligners here, these things have never been installed in a printer before. Uh, so I have new bearings, I have four of them in case I need them. Uh, I like to have backups. But yes, you're correct, you don't want to uh, put too much pressure on the bearings because they uh, you have those little little balls in there. Now I'll tell you that um, I think uh, in one of my live streams when I built this machine, I don't remember which bearing it is, it's either this one or this one. I lost a couple balls out of one of them whenever I was threading it, or whenever I was putting the x-axis um, gantry on uh, the smooth rod. It didn't go in 100% straight, and a couple balls fell out, and then it went on, so I never took it back off to uh, check. Uh, it never made any noise, never had anything uh, wrong with it. So, uh, you know. I'm assuming that if it doesn't come with new bearings, that I'm going to have to use one of those because if I have to reuse those bearings, it's probably they're probably going to fall out whenever I take it off of there anyway. Uh, that's kind of why I printed out and made those little uh, custom holders so that if I ever wanted to, I could use it for that. So, um, you know what? Where are the new bolts? I don't want to have them. Oh, and I also have, I think I talked about in a previous stream, I've got dryland bearings. Sorry, I keep them in a prescription tube there. I also have dryland bearings too. Um, I did put them in the machine for a short time. Um, I had some problems with the bed, so I took them out to get rid of the change and um, just never put them back in. I don't think they were the problem. Uh, maybe I might try them again on this machine. I have no idea. Uh, what do you think, Flavorous? Do you think I should try doing the, the, uh, the dryland bearings on the Y axis at least for this machine? I do have, uh, I actually have enough. Never even opened this kit. I do have enough to do all of the access. And they're all dry, dry line. They're all brand name ones. They're not any of it. Failed to form. That's what I've read a lot about. I also heard they're not as, not as, um, I heard they're quieter, but they're not as smooth. Uh, so, um, what the guy meant by that in the post, I have no idea. Uh, but, so I just kind of stuck with the, the, the bearings that came with it, but I need to find, that's what I was gonna, I was gonna find the, uh, probably one of my drawers here. I can't get to because I've moved stuff. 
Yep, there they are. My wife's a nurse, so we have access to lots of prescription bottles, so I use them all over the place to store stuff. So there's my uh, my U-bolts. Perfect. I'm actually going to throw those in there. That way I can get them easier. The Y-axis idler. So now we need to... Oh, you don't put them in this in this printer? Okay. Yeah, no. Um, that's what I was asking. I didn't think I was going to. Uh, I've seen, I have haven't seen a lot about them recently. Most people are sticking with this. Um, I know that when the um, MK2S first came out, a lot of people were gung-ho about using the ingus bearings. There was lots of parts you could find to adapt this and that, so on and so forth. Uh, but we want to take out this idler pulley now. So use the 2 5 key. key. M3, move the screw from the wax. Idler, take the 623H housing bearing and keep it for later. So, oh, I need a needle nose pliers for this. So actually, I've got something for this that I'm going to try to do on this printer. So... here. Oh, well, that's in there tight. Oh, it's just it's still thread through the plastic. So hold on, I'll show you in a second what I'm going to do. Or I'm going to try anyway. Let's we'll see if it works. And actually right now I can kind of tell you if it's going to work or not. So I always thought it was strange to use a smooth idler pulley on the tooth side of a belt. So I have these toothed pulley bearings. They don't have as much of a flange to hold the belt into place. look to be from what I can tell at least close to the same diameter barrel and it's the same hardware yep same hardware to install it and it's a little bit smaller I wonder if I could use these washers Yeah, it looks like I could use these washers as spacers to keep it separated from the printed part. So I might try it, at least the y-axis and see. Uh, but it's just something that I feel it's going to be a lot nicer with the, um, the teeth of the GT2 belt. It just... I noticed on my x-axis that it wobbles back and forth the uh, the, be the, the belt and it kind of walks back and forth as the extruder goes back and forth and I've always I've tried to make sure it's all in there now they match the belt they're GT2 and it's the same spacing I made sure to get the same spacing and everything you may be right I may not want to but I'm playing with it right now and this is spot on. Like there's no crunching whenever I'm running it over. I might save it for another day as an experiment because I do have the other printer running, right? So this can kind of be my experiment printer with the other printer going. Um, so, you know, might want to uh, try it, but you know, I think you're right, flavors. I might not do it right now. It might be something I do in the future. Yeah, because this is uh this is the same bearing. This bearing is sold as a kit with the same gear that they use on the uh, the X-axis motor. 
yeah, and it's not like it's a hard change either. That's why I would do it on the Y, not the X. The X axis is a lot harder to get to. I would do it on the Y first just to make sure that it's not going to hurt anything. So I may or may not do it. I'll figure it out when I get to that point. So. Extruder removal. Using pliers, uh, cut the zip tie. So now we need to go back around to this side of the machine. And cut the zip tie holding the cables from the extruder. Process carefully. You can, you can break the cables. Oh yeah, there is a zip tie right there. I totally forgot about that zip tie. How are you supposed to cut that with a pair of pliers? Wait, there's no zip tie there. That's just a... Uh... Oh, there's a zip tie right there. I see it. I see it. I can get it from right here. That zip tie is uh, completely not in my memory banks. No cables over here. So I'm not worried about cutting anything that I don't want to be cutting. That's a tough one to get from, get to. There we go. There's that zip tie. Is it? I thought I got it. I spun the head around. There it is. Boom. Oh yeah, it fed through. Oh, I do remember that now. Okay. And then using pliers, cut the zip ties on the spiral wrap behind the extruder. Again, proceed carefully. You can break the cables, unwrap the spiral wrap all the way to the Rambo. So we want to uncut this zip tie right here. And undo the spiral wrap. Also wants us to cut these zip ties as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Wow, this old cable management thing here. This is kind of sketchy compared to what the new one looks like. I mean, come on. Uses a long M3 bolt and these two little. Let me show you. I'm sure you remember when you were doing it, Flavorous. But uh, so these two pieces went together. And there was a spot for the head of the bolt, and this is the part that all of the extruder cables, okay, it's not good to go against the black background, all the extruder cables tied to. And just as a comparison, uh, where'd it go? There it is. Oh, wait. There it is. This is the new part that all the zip ties have their own individual homes for. You can see the uh, six holes there that the zip ties go through. And uh, this gets bolted straight to uh, the extruder as well uh, with a single bolt. So a good upgrade there. I'm going to assume we're not keeping those, obviously. Let's say we are. Uh, but now we're going to undo the spiral wrap. Actually, we'll go back to that camera. There we go. Not on this on not in this one, no. I never did the Noctara fan upgrade. Um, thought about it multiple times, just never did it. Again, I wasn't a hundred percent worried about noise, because uh, again I had a separate room or you know, this house a basement. 
that uh, it was uh, in, so noise was never a big deal. Um, not saying I don't uh, like a quiet machine. I mean, uh, the MK3, uh, the MK3 Mark III, has uh, impressed me with how quiet it is, uh, and it comes with the Noctora fan now, so it's uh, you know, definitely an upgrade that you know maybe I should have done, but you know, hey. It, this uh, this upgrade kit comes with one, so kind of glad I didn't, because now I you know didn't have to buy one. It comes in this kit. All right, spiral wrap is off. Obviously, not going to be using that again. Out of the way, that's trash. That's trash. Did you do the uh, Noctor fan upgrade on your MK3 before you uh, got rid of it? There, Flavorous. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 an excellent quality fans. Yeah, uh, I technically don't have a desktop right now. I mean, I do have one that I'm running, but it's an old hand-me-down one that I just use for random stuff. And you had that you did have it. All right, so uh, using pliers cut the zip ties. Unwrap the spell wrap by the Rambo board. Done. Using pliers cut the zip tie, uh, holding the cables. So we'll cut our big zip tie here. And we'll cut the zip tie, holding the cables. This pull through here. I guess I can just cut it on both sides. Not use them, reusing zip ties or anything. Sure, they provide us with another big bag of zip ties. Um, I did like on this machine being able to access the uh, back of the extruder for the belt tensioning better. Again, this is how they used to do the uh, belt tensioning or the the belt securing, where they would pass it through a small gap, wrap it around this post here. The background on itself it actually made it really easy to um you know if you uh, were trying to tension it you know pull it out retension it the, you can't see it in the video i probably couldn't even show it to you if i tried but there's a bunch of little black lines that i would mark with my sharpie marker trying to tension that um, but so now that we've got that done we need to undo uh, using a 2.5 allen key release all three screws holding the extruder body while releasing the last screw, hold the extruder. It will fall off. Okay, so, and it's got these three here. So uh, let's go ahead and do the top one here. from the printer. Well, how come you're not telling me to take the uh, belts out yet? I'm pretty sure they'll come out as I do it, but let me go ahead and I'm going to pull the belts out. Actually, I should be loosening the uh, motor to do that, but you know, it's alright. Let's just continue with the instructions the way they have it. Oh, that's right, because it doesn't, this back plate doesn't come with it, duh. The extruder just comes off. All these cables should be loose before I do this. Being careful not to twist too many cables. They can break, especially down there. A lot of them are getting replaced, but I just want to make sure. See, 
now that I got these screwdrivers and bits and stuff, now I want to get them, get one of my power screwdrivers out and put one of these bits on there. Come on. This one screw is giving me a bit of a pain. Why is it always the extruder that gives me the problems? Oh wow, that's not fun. Why did that just come out completely? Maybe I got a cheap screwdriver kit. Hey, if it gets me through this build, it was worth it. It wasn't that expensive. It wasn't cheap. It wasn't the cheapest one I could find, but it wasn't the most expensive. So. Again. What am I doing? There we go. Um, I don't know what the conversion rate is right now, but I think this thing was like twelve bucks. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna save me a ton of time too. Uh, when I have new screws, I think this screw just may have just been stripped when I installed it the first time. I mean, this screw hasn't been touched since I installed it in there, so it's a good possibility I might have stripped it, uh, stripped the hex end of it during install. That's already all the way out. I was twisting it for no darn reason whatsoever. Let me untangle some of these wires so I can get them fed back through the smooth rods. Cables untangled one handed is fun. There we go. And then oh boy, that hot end. I'm just I just glanced down at the hot end and that thing's a hot mess. I'll show you in a sec. Now I will I will be honest as after after the last print I did not clean it I usually clean it before each print uh, at least the um, the, the uh, extruder but the um, even the heater block is uh, pretty darn messy. Assembly is out. Let's see if I can pull this. There we go. Get that nylon cable out of the way. Uh, I believe it comes with new nylon cables. So, um, yeah. So, I know that extruder hot ends get really dirty. 
I mean, I've seen worse than that. Let's see if I can get a good, good shot of that in there. Yeah, that's a new head too. That's not even that old of a head. I think I just replaced that like two weeks ago. Uh, you can see it got turned into the parts fan there a little bit too last time I changed it out. Well, we're getting all new of that anyway. So let me go back to the overhead. There we go. Um, so using a two, two, 2.5 millimeter screw. Um, so I did have this uh, one little piece uh, that's extra on here, custom. Uh, this was for a um, for an endoscope camera that I never got working and I just never took the holder off. So I wanted to see what was happening with the uh, the extrusion. So this little piece here held an endoscope, USB endoscope camera. Um, you just use the zip tie to secure it into place. I just could never get it to stream with uh, OctoPrint. Um, so I always had to plug it into my phone for some reason and only the camera I got only worked with my phone uh, So I would plug it in my phone and you know once I got the print bed, you know decent enough to print stuff and not worry about it um, I took the endoscope camera out and just never took this part off because it just didn't get it in the way of anything So I just kind of left it on there. So It's just funny To me anyway, it's funny So let's go ahead and take all of this off so we need this uh, we need the fan keep both springs for it so release the four screws on the left the hot end fan yeah it was uh, it was nice to have that little you know close-up view of um, exactly what was happening with the extrusion uh, with the plastic being extruded out uh, and how it was hitting the, uh, the, the, the bed uh, whether it was um, you know and he didn't, and he, uh, had good adhesion to the bed or not uh, so you know it did its job for when I needed it and then just never removed it because it was not in the way so again just little you know wasn't custom you know all over the place with this build it was just every once in a every every little bit here and there so but it actually wants me to remove whole fan that is tight in there there we go you know I'm now wishing I would have bought a ratcheting screwdriver. I thought to myself when I was looking at them, I was like, no, the ratcheting is just going to be even worse with trying to, um, you know, tighten things down and getting it too tight and breaking parts and making mistakes. It's like, I don't want a ratcheting one. I just want to keep it simple, have that little rotating tip to it to make things easier. And it is definitely making things easier. I'm just now, I'm wishing I got the ratcheting one with uh, what I'm doing at this very moment. These longer screws start getting tough on the wrist here. All right. Now it doesn't say anything about keeping the fan. Yeah, the screws are too tiny, but then they're long. Uh, but I will keep this fan for a future projects like having spare parts extra pieces all that stuff so next step in step eight is to remove the springs for the idler pulley I'll get out of I'll see these springs here and we do have to keep the springs for the new upgrade, so we don't want the we don't want these to go anywhere. I'm still going to put them with the extra parts here. 
because they're too small to go in the other box. I'm going to leave them on their screw just so it's easier to find them. And then last but not least, it wants us to uh, remove the screws holding the extruder motor. We will keep the extruder motor for use later, which I knew obviously we're going to be keeping all motors for all of it. I don't think they've updated the motors. I mean, they're good motors in the first place. Right, so that screw I think is a little stripped. Extruder motor is now free. So we are going to keep this in this box for later use. All right, next step. So I did all that, right? Yep, did all that, did all that. Next step X access, remove the motor cables. So we want to move the Z axis uh, up by rotating the trapezoid screws. You're reaching three fourths of the printer's height, stop and turn the printer on its PSU side. So let's put the extruder out of the way for a moment. I, th I don't think we're using anything off the rest of that. I wish it said that though. Their instructions should say if you're keeping any of the rest of this or if you can put this all off to the side because it's going to be replaced. It's nothing in the comments. So we'll wait till later on for judgment on that, but the x-axis, so I've already got the, uh, the, the z-axis up a little bit over three quarters of the way. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on to the power supply side. Uh, switch to the overhead. Uh, moves that, uh, using 2.5 Allen key, release the bottom screw from the Rambo cover and rotate the cover slightly. Uh, so we're taking off all we're taking it off basically so I'm not gonna switch the camera so we're just gonna undo this there's a screw head right here there it is I'm like looking way too deep up in there and it just says to do it slight um, Release the bottom, oh, it says release the bottom screw. So let's go ahead and pull it all the way out. There's that screw. And then rotate it slightly upwards. Do not unwrap the spiral wrap for now, just follow in the Rambo case and remove the cable. So just want them go inside and get this loose from the Rambo case. There we go. So it is all loose from the Rambo case now. Turn the printer back onto its feet. Back on its feet. All right, moving on to the next step. I'm using the 2.5 millimeter Allen screws, gonna re remove my uh, my custom parts here. I don't know if you were here for this part, flavors, but I was talking about. I did print and use these custom um, captive Z-axis top brackets that allowed me to use the skate bearing to keep the uh, threaded rod from uh, wobbling around inside the old printed part. Uh, noticed a lot of wobbling in the, in the Z-axis threaded rod whenever I was uh, printing, and so. One of the first upgrades I did to this printer was actually print these parts out and use it, and it's been fantastic. So um, thought about doing it for the Mark III. It's an easy upgrade, real simple. You had bearing upgrade too, good. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it was a good, good, good upgrade. Nice little part right there. The new part is a lot more captive, and I haven't noticed the the threaded rod on the Mark III. 
moving, so uh, I may not do it. I don't know, um, but obviously I'm going to keep these somewhere handy. Uh, I don't think these would work with the Mark III. I think there's a different spacing. So obviously I don't use those parts again, but it doesn't hurt to keep them for now anyway. All right, so yeah, and now uh, we're gonna move the smooth rod on both sides. If you can't pull them easily, try to rotate them first. See carefully, you can break the parent part in the bottom of the z-axis, rotate the trapezoid nuts and move the x-axis all the way up. So this is the part where um, I think these uh, bearings on this right side of the machine are gonna fall out. So we're gonna find out, right? Those are stuck down in there really good. Come on. All right, let's try this one first. Oh yeah, that one rotates. That one's just stuck in there really good. So I'm gonna try to pull this straight out. Nice. I'm gonna put that somewhere safe. Let's try to rotate this side. Feels like it's rotating. Can't tell if my fingers are slipping or if it's actually rotating. There we go. So let's see, I'm gonna try to catch any balls that might fall out. Oh, no. I do see, I can see down in the tracks that there's a couple balls missing there. Also went down and there's a big blank spot up there now. So now I'm gonna rotate the trapezoid screw, move the X axis all the way up you're reaching the top, all the axis by one hand, it'll fall off once leaving the threads. So we're gonna rotate this all by hand, all the way up till it hits the top. I'm gonna kinda use my fingers as shelves here. If I can, come on. because we are going to be reusing these nuts. I want to be very careful. Come on. What is it stuck on? Oh. Pff. Duh. Totally forgot that. I'm just going to grab this and do, take that off. Don't forget that. Probably missed that in the steps somewhere. Missed a colored circle that told me to remove this bolt or something. There we go. Now I should be able to do it. 
problem. I was like, why isn't that going off? That shouldn't be that hard. So now I should be able to just use my fingers as, there we go. Perfect, that's all loose. So next step has us working on this piece here. So let's pull this out of the way. And now using pliers, uh, take the belt out from the X carriage. So do exactly what I was doing before, but now they tell me to do it. I'm gonna put those pliers in there. And now I can pull the belt out. Beautiful. Thread it from that end. Should I'll just pull this in by my hand now. Yep. No problem. Remove the motor and wrap the spout wrap all the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and unthread the GT2 belt out of this piece just to keep it out of the way. Now next step is to uh, release the mark screws on the motor. Uh, oh, so before you remove the motor, unwrap it. So unwrap the spiral wrap off of here. That's because the end stop and the motor are all wrapped together in here. This way, right? All right, spiral work done. Now we're going to release the motor. And uh, release the market. Keep the pulley on the axis motor. Yeah. So there's another zip tie here that I need to cut. I don't remember seeing a step to cut it, but I'm going to cut it because we don't need this end stop. There we go. So our X axis motor is free. And my, we're going to reuse box. Uh, move the other side. Uh, okay. Uh, so release the mark screws. Keep the pulley on the x-axis motor. Move the other side. The x-axis release the N3 screws to take away the bearing. So um, I don't know how well it's going to show on the camera. Let's see. It's going to zoom cams. This is one of the problems that I had. And they beefed up the part. <sighs> can you see it? That crack. There it is. You can see it right there. There's another one on the other side too, just from over tightening this bearing um, too much. And this is also where I had the problem. You can kind of see down in the uh, hole right there. I don't know if you can see on camera yet. You can see some black uh, dust residue from the belt rubbing somewhere in there. And actually now that I'm looking down in there, I can't get it on camera, but you can see some black residue. There it is. Yep, you can see some black residue. That's the bottom. Let me see if I can get you to see the top. Now you can't see the top. But I can see some black residue at the top as well. And it's funny that on the bearing, I can get some focus. There's actually little lines of black residue where the teeth were rubbing on the bearing. There you go. See it? See, there's like little straight black lines spaced out exactly at the teeth. 
and that's what I was talking about with the um, with the little upgrade I was thinking about doing um, is that you know there's not a lot of surface area for that belt to hit this flat surface uh, so and especially if it moves back and forth I could see it wearing out the teeth now obviously I've been praying with that for every year and a half so it's probably in the long run or in the short term not a problem but you know in a very very long term situation it could be a problem again I'm probably not going to do it um, to this upgrade kit again I may change my mind I always reserve the right to change my mind um, but because this is such a difficult p uh, part to um, get to once it's installed um, I don't think I'm going to do it just in case there is a problem and then if it, it's not a problem uh, if I do it on the y-axis then I may you know go through the extra steps to, to change it later on but like I said uh, the, no it was uh, was so it was aligned from the motor to the extruder uh, from that end that was obviously one of the steps you go through when we're, when we're assembling it it's not saying I did it perfect right I'm not perfect whatsoever um, but um, I would like to think that I did that right because I had it straight run I looked at the side of it all the time while it was printing to make sure there was no wobble back and forth on the pulley side of things or excuse me on the um, the motor side of things um, and then when I would look on the pulley side it was you know wobbling back and forth some so um, and it was on the top side too so it was on the top side that really I had no control over where it was at so I don't know if it was a flaw in the printed part and it wasn't aligned that could be a possibility um, or if it was some other design flaw or if it was an error I made during my during the assembly I do not know um, I never really seen anybody complain about it I just noticed it it kind of bugged me so you know, never stopped me from doing anything, but just kind of bugged me. All right, so and we so we need we need that bearing though. I need my need all those pliers to hold this nut. It's funny, it's only on half of it, not the other half. That's interesting. Yeah, the bearing works. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, moving on. So now it wants us to take the trapezoidal nuts out. So let's go ahead and do that because we are reusing these as well. that are captive up inside that piece but they're not falling out Let's see eh, we leave them on. so it's got us moving on now so again the rest of this assembly I'm gonna assume that uh, we don't need anything from it I do want to take this this bolt out this screw out um, because it's not telling us to remove anything else it's not telling us to save anything else for later obviously we'll make that judgment call later on if the steps don't call for it it would be nice that if we didn't need to do anything here, uh, if we didn't anything else here, that it did instruct that. Um, so I'm going to assume we don't. I'm going to load the comments up and see if the comments say anything. Uh, you should also keep the two black rings on the x-axis. Uh, two black ring on the x-axis because it's not provided an upgrade. Uh, 
Yeah, so, okay, yeah. So I guess the original instructions did not say to keep the black trepezital nuts and then they upgraded it. Yeah, that's an important step. So that's what I was, you know, is that they forgot to, to set, tell us you got to keep the trepezital nuts on the original ones. Um, then, um, you know, who knows if they forgot something else. Can I get that? that out of there? Yeah, not worried about it. All right, this is going up and out of the way into the spare parts bin that I'm going to have to create. All right, let's put those away. So now find the cables going from the Z-axis motor and cut all the zip ties holding to the frame. So uh, let's go back to the back of the printer here. It's weird they don't, they don't tell us to put it on its side again. So we're going to put it on its side again here because I need to cut all these zip ties and it's just going to be way easier from the side. Doing the same thing that it told me to do the whole time, put it on its uh, power supply unit side. So I remember when I um, built the MK2S as a quick side note because it just came to my mind. Uh, that In the instructions, it never really told you to do this, right? To put the machine on its side and install or uninstall or move things around with the machine in this orientation. Um, has the instructions for the MK2S been updated? I'm sure they have. I just remember I live streamed that build as well and I remember someone was on there watching me do it. And when I did this, um, they were like, oh, are you sure you should do that? And I'm like, there's no reason not to. Uh, and it's funny that it's updated in the instructions. Um, I think maybe it did in one spot um, and then it stopped telling you to do it afterwards, kind of like here where it's, it's told me to do it a couple of times now and then uh, it stopped telling me to do it. So since the instructions didn't tell you to do it, you know, that, that viewer was telling me maybe you shouldn't be doing it, but it never heard anything that I can think of. And now that they're telling me to do it more and more, and even in the MK3 build, it was, you know, done a lot. I'm going to go ahead and just cut all these zip ties while I'm underneath here. No more zip ties, no more zip ties, no more zip ties. All right, so now we've got those cables free. Once I get this one from this LCD cable, let me unclip that from there. I'm going to go ahead and clip it back in though so that it doesn't get in the way and break. So now we're going to remove the x-axis motors, which we of course keep. Cables, cables, cables. So here's my driver. That's funny, I, I, and the picture there doesn't show washers, but I have washers insta installed on all mine. I wonder if that was, I don't remember if that was a part of the instructions or something that I did. I don't know why I would do that. I don't see the, uh, the absolute need for washers in this spot. I mean, besides that, this plastic piece could use a little help with strength of holding the gantry, moving up and down, jostling around, having an extra washer in there wouldn't be a bad thing. Reinforcing this tight connection. But at the same time, it doesn't seem like, uh, carefully lift the printer up so you can take both the axes So we're gonna do this one at a time, obviously. Uh, you know, the instructions it says, Release some marked screws and motor holder as the access. You know, you lay the motor on the table workbench below the printer. Repeat the previous. Oh, so it says repeat it and lift it. So let's actually do them both at the same time. Maybe that is the best way. Let's do it that way. There we go. I'm guessing what it's telling me to do is to do this, lay them on the table, and then lift the frame up over. So. Let's just follow the instructions. Found that when you follow the instructions after reading them entirely, things work out better in the end. That is a uh, washers kind of came up became a part of that plastic piece. It's mounts.
place that on the table. I guess it, it would have been just as easy to do it the other way, one at a time. All right, so now we've got this. Uh, we can pull these, put these out of the way, somewhere safe where this threaded rod won't get damaged. Go and move on to the next step. Uh, so now he tells me to turn the printer on, this, on, the, on the power supply inside again, release the LCD cables from their clips. little printed part clips here for these LCD cables. Uh, release the LCD clips using a pair of pliers. Start cutting the zip ties holding the LCD. Okay. Use my side cutters. It's only two zip ties if I remember. Uh, and then Release the screws. Uh, really inspired. Cut the holes. Looks like it fall off. Um, mine's not falling off at all. This is actually kind of stuck on here. Uh, and then release the. Uh, it'd be easier to guys to say. This simple. This is simple. Everything but frame. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, obviously with the the uh, extruder, right? We're, we're using. We're not reusing a lot of that. We're using a little bit of it. Um, uh, the bed we're using some of it as well. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much you know almost a whole new printer after this process is done because we're actually going to reuse the whole superstructure the old uh, laser cut steel here um, but I don't see uh, it says to um, pull the LCD it will fall off release the screws inside okay so it's okay once I get this off here so let's get this off that was on there really good wow get the frame out of the way for a second Oh, zip ties out. There we go. And it shows a brown color, but it doesn't circle anything that we need. Release the screws inside LCD cover and disassemble the printer parts from the LCD. Keep the cover and knob, but the supports will be replaced. Okay, so there's no second picture or anything either. So I know what they mean. They want us to undo this screw just stripped it in. I don't know if it's the bit or if it's the screw but it's just random screws that bit doesn't want to work with it does not feel very magnetic to me either let's try it on this one it's working fine on this one so far. All right. And then I need to take out this LCD board. Which is a little tab inside here you're going to get it loose from and then kind of work its way out the plastic pieces kind of fit to it pretty well this side's giving me the most problems with the tab on the top the left side's not wanting to come loose there we go oh darker darker the knob is on there duh so uh, it is saying to keep the uh, co uh, the cover here. So I was just pretty I was pretty sure I said at the beginning of the stream I don't you weren't here um, play this, uh, but you know I thought that the wording stated where I was going to need a new one of these. I don't. It says to keep it, and these are what need to come off and are going to be replaced because I did print new ones of these because obviously there's no longer any more threaded rods. These only fit threaded rods. So let's carefully. Work these off of here. 
put this in the old parts file. Old parts file. And make sure those two pieces there are good. So uh, using pliers, start cutting zip ties, hold the LCD. Um, this assembly is not finished. I still have to remove the uh, threaded rods and everything. So what are they talking about? Unless, am I wrong? No, so um, that's a great question, Flavors. Uh, I've been very interested in SLS printers, uh, SLA printers, things like that. Um, a, uh, little too much money. Uh, I know he, he made it, you know, inexpensive compared to other uh, SLA printers. Um, I do live uh, up in the Massachusetts area, um, not too far away from Form Labs, and I really want to go see their labs and see their printers. Uh, plus the um, the uh, messiness and the the danger. I get not really danger, but just the chemicals involved with it. You know, I used to be a, a photographer back in the day, um, and had a buddy with a dark room, and I remember all of the chemicals for the dark room, and I can only picture that having an SLA printer or SLS printer, excuse me, um, similar to that, right, where you have to keep those chemicals, you know, uh, in uh, protected from UV, and then you know the dangers of having them if they spill, and the process after the print with cleaning them up or putting them in the UV bag, and they make beautiful prints. Um, yeah, and the material is expensive. Uh, it's coming way down in price. Obviously, as it gets more popular, it's going to come even further down in price. Uh, so it's definitely something you know I might get into in the future, um, but not at this time. Uh, FDM printing is a lot more accessible, a lot easier to maintain, um, a lot easier to, to work with. Um, so, uh, but good question. I mean, I really wanted to. Um, it was definitely... Um, an internal struggle for me to uh, not do it or to do it uh, and I was always leaning towards I want to do it but yeah I might don't no, don't quote me on it though I don't think I will for a while maybe his next iteration right because I mean the i3 had how many different iterations before the so the mk2s so without that uh, there was what two there was the i3, the uh, MK1, uh, the MK2, the MK2S, and now the MK3, or the MK3. So uh, I might wait for you know the MK1 or whatever they call the next SLS printer. What he puts together is awesome. So anyway, so now it wants us to double check. Um, we wanted this as someone to check to see if you have all the parts ready. Nope, not all parts are on the picture. So we want the linear motors times five. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep, they're all right there. Uh, two of the 623H bearings, yep. Two extruder strings, yep. Uh, LCD including cables, boom. LCD knob and cover, yes. Beautiful. I'm going to actually put this in this little box right here. Uh, printer parts for the MK3 upgrade. Let me go back to this uh, camera here. Uh, MK3, two part, uh, MK3, MK3 parts printed, boom, right there. And then U bolts, uh, where did I put them? Right there, boom, three. Uh, so. We are done. Let's move on. So do they give us a new superstar? Oh, they have to. They have to because it's different. Oh, I do get a new one. Man. You know, I might have enough parts after I'm done with all this to scrap together a third printer. <laughs> That's going to be funny. Um, I could probably scrap together a third printer after I'm done with all this. Uh, so uh, uh, use our online M3 uh, assembly manual. Oh, so we just go through the assembly process again. I guess you just watch my, my previous stream, so I'm kidding. I'm still going to do it. Um, but So that was the only unique portion of this. So here is what is left of the uh, MK2S. Let me get this LCD out of the way. So Flavors, you're right. The uh, instructions should have just been uh, uh, take off everything. But, but what's funny is I still have... Oh, I'm not going to pull it all over here, but the, the heat bed's still over there. Uh, the whole X assembly's still over there. Half the extruder's still over there. Um, I mean, the only thing that's not there is I, I would have to buy to, to make a third printer. 
uh, I would have to get um, new threaded rods and motors, uh, which you know shouldn't be too difficult. Um, but definitely <laughs> remake the MK2S all over again. Uh, that's 